understanding the process of fragmentation budding and regeneration the first process that we would understand today is the process of budding budding is commonly seen in hydra and yeast the common process of budding is the at a specific locations you have a new organism the same parent organism detaching from a specific location and a new organism being formed so let's say we have a hydra being made of dough here now this hydra slowly and gradually at a specific location would start to develop the bud so there would be bud that would start to develop and this bud would slowly and gradually develop to form a new small young hydra and that is the process of budding budding is commonly seen in two species one is hydra and then other common species that you must know is yeast yeast reproduces by two mechanisms one is the budding that we are discussing right now the other important mechanism for yeast is binary fission where a simple cloning and two identical cells being produced are seen hydra reproduces by two important methods one is the budding that we are on right now and the next is regeneration that we would understand in a while now the process of budding is a process of vegetative propagation where symmetrical cells are being formed so the new hydra has a symmetric division that occurs and uh, the formation of new species is seen in the case of yeast it's important that yeast multiply only in sugar solution sugar is a medium which provides energy for multiplication uh, yeast would not multiply in a normal water solution so that is something besides this also we have heard about one of the processes which is spore formation which do not commonly occur in yeast but it occurs in some of the fungi which we would understand separately in a different lecture so here we have a quick animation to understand and how from the hydra you have a new bud that develops and this new bud slowly and gradually detaches into a new hydra that is being formed the next method that we are talking about is the method of regeneration this method is commonly seen in hydra then you have flat worm flat worms which are also known as planaria now since flat worms are there their friend tape worms would also be there so easier way to remember flat worms and tape worms both reproduce by the process of regeneration and along with them you have starfish so these are the species where you have regeneration process that we understand now this regeneration process is very very simple let's take another hydra here so this hydra is here now this hydra is being cut so it's simply being cut into two hydras uh, two parts the upper half and the lower half now what would happen this upper half and lower half would regenerate into independent two hydras one which had just the upper half would develop the lower half one which had the lower half would develop the upper half and this is the process of regeneration now regeneration occurs as we said uh, when regeneration occurs in two simple processes so the first process that we understand for the regeneration is morphoelixis and the other process is epimorphosis what is the difference um, the difference are a uh, lot many in this class what we would do is we would focus on uh, the basic difference okay so morphoelixis and epimorphosis let's understand this one by one morphoelixis means there is a dependence on tissue patterning that means the example of hydra where we have said that the foot and the head would separate out so you would have the foot and the head activator that would be seen and two identical hydras would be formed the other is epimorphosis epimorphosis is seen where there is the formation of blastema at the site of separation a good example would be what a good example would be regeneration of the tail of a lizard and that is a process of epimorphosis if the lizard is being broken from any part definitely it won't regenerate but only if it is tail it would regenerate and this is the growth of a new and a properly patterned structure that is being seen so that is the process of epimorphosis so a basic difference between morphoelixis and epimorphosis uh, a separate lecture we would cover uh, for those where we would be talking about these concepts in more detail so a very simple example of regeneration of hydra uh, we have a simple animation so this hydra divides into two and both of them develops into a independent hydra the next process that we talk about is fragmentation 
Now fragmentation, the common example is Spirogera. Spirogera is important first of all because it is known for its spiral chloroplast. So that is one of the interesting characteristics that Spirogera possesses. You have more than 400 species of Spirogeras that are present. Spirogera reproduce by many means. One is fragmentation, the other is sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Here we would be talking about the fragmentation. So you have independent filaments that are fragmented and each of the filament has a capability to, re to form a new uh, species of spirogera. As we said uh, in the case of asexual reproduction there is akinites or azunophores that are being formed in the case of spirogera and then there is a process of conjugation for sexual reproduction that we would cover in a separate lecture. When we talk about the fragmentation as we said here this uh, spirogera separates out into two filaments and each of this develops into a new filament. So that is how the division actually takes place or the fragmentation occurs in spirogera. We would be covering many more interesting processes and concepts in science. Stay tuned for updates from our side. Have a wonderful day ahead.